Thank you. Um, thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Mark Bongaerts, Head of Collection Care Technicians at the Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam. Um, as you can see, um, before I came, became an art handler, I did a lot of different jobs where I learned a lot of different skills. Um, they're so different from each other, but if you add them all up, you're the perfect art handler. <laughs> <laughs> um, in 2002, I started at the Stedelijk Museum uh, as a uh, crate builder art handler. In the next two years, I, um, I, I uh, learned everything about art handling on the job. In the Netherlands, there isn't an education for art handling. People are drawn to the profession. A lot of them are artists themselves or technicians that are uh, working in museums and learned art handling during installations and, uh, and on the job. Um, when my uh, head of uh, department retired in uh, 2004, uh, I became the new head of the collection care technicians. Um, you can say that my network, what we're talking about today, started in 2007. Um, corrosion intercept, um, was a new material that was on the market. One of uh, my um, uh, uh, companies that I buy materials from uh, approached me that they had a new packing material. It was very di uh, difficult, technical, so they offered me to have a, uh, a specialist coming and do a presentation about the material. It's an active material that will um, uh, work uh, in a really technical way. Um, I was thinking, yeah, presentation, uh, the, the specialist can do it for me, but um, maybe some of my colleagues will also be interested, especially colleagues from the uh, conservator department, um, where, um, where I work really close together with. But what I was thinking, from, in Amsterdam, there are a lot of museums that also have like technicians and, uh, and departments that are doing packing and, uh, and conservation. Maybe they're also interested to see what uh, that specialist had to say about the material. So I organized a, uh, a, 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 an afternoon with the specialist. We had a small space in the museum where everybody was together and uh, the specialist gave the presentation about the material. Here you can see that um, I used uh, the, the material, and I don't know if there's a cursor on it. Yeah, you see here a black lining in the crates. Uh, that's actually the material that's called corrosion intercept. It's um, an active material that uh, uh, consists of uh, small uh, copper particles that will act as a scavenger um, uh, material. Um, corrosion. And uh, the corrosion intercept uh, material that will prevent uh, the highly polished bronze uh, rods that you see here um, getting dull through cor corrosion. Um, the material will keep the pollutants away that will um, uh, react on the polished um, uh, surface of the, of the rods and will eat those pollutants and keep it in it. So it's a difficult material to grasp. I didn't know it before, and uh, it's so it's also difficult uh, to get um, to to use it directly with an object. Um, before um, I made this new crate, we, we've got our own crate um, uh, building uh, facility. Um, those rods were uh, kept in different crates. Uh, they were, were wrapped in, uh, in a, a fabric material. So every time we wanted to install this object, we uh, two conservators were uh, uh, polishing the rods for a, a week long. So that's a lot of work. And also the surface will, every time when you polish, there will be a thin layer removed. So that's not good. So when we could keep those uh, rods really high gloss for a longer time, it was a real bonus. Uh, so in 2009, 
I, I became a board member of the collection care uh, group with the Dutch uh, Conservatives uh, uh, Association. Um, we organized several field days and excursions and presentations. But we also were involved in an uh, expert group that advised the Dutch Ministry of Education in a new collection care educational program that was uh, two years later, um, was, um, uh, uh, was a new study that you could uh, learn art handling, uh, collection care, preventive uh, uh, conservation. Um, it's good that you are involved in all those groups. And a network is not only your colleagues or your peers, but it's broader. And that's what I, um, uh, that's what I discovered on my way. So it's not that I was thinking, oh, I have to build my network. Sometimes things come to you and on your path, and then you have to get it and act on it. And you never know when or where, but always say yes to everything you are interested in. You never know what you learn, but you never know who you will meet and who you will deal later on with. Um, 2010, we, had, uh, we have in uh, the Netherlands a uh, scheme with uh, shipping companies. They uh, got rental crates for paintings. Um, there, there are the, we, we've got three um, shipping companies that we will use in our museum and their own got their own crates. Uh, we've got Hasekamp also from Germany that also got his own crates. So we were, th and there was a new crate on the market. So we were thinking that new crate, what, what, what is the performance of it? We knew the old ones, we thought, um, but the new one we didn't. And there wasn't any testing report with that crate, so we had to uh, try out to, um, to, to think how is that crate reacting, how is it performing. Now, instead of doing that only crate, we thought, oh, why don't we make a group of different museums? Uh, I approached uh, eight big Dutch museums to be involved. When you do that, you've got a lot of, lot of knowledge with you. So we had to do a risk management also uh, in, the, in, the, in the testing of the rental crates. And that was very interesting because in that group we had guys that were, um, and one girl I must say, but mostly guys in my profession that, were, uh, that had like 20 years experience. So if you add them all together, the outcome of a risk management can be different than you think beforehand. So, example, um, is it a risk to get your painting stolen from a truck in a crate? Do you have to close your crate, uh, get it locked? No, it isn't, our group uh, was, um, was telling me, because nobody experienced a loss during transport. So, we had a lot of questions, and in the risk management, um, we had all those questions asked. Um, here you see our crate. I told you we built them before. From all the crates, the worst performance from crates was our own. For me, that was an eye-opener. This was a design that was um, what, what I was handed uh, from my pre pre predecessor. And I thought, oh, it's a good design. It's got isolation materials in it. So we also can use it uh, when we're doing uh, air freight, but when we tested it, it was in shock and vibration, the worst performer. It was in climate uh, change, the worst performer. Um, so when you're testing also your own things, it's good to see what you're doing and if you're still doing it uh, okay. Um, in the same year, I uh, applied for a, uh, uh, a research trip um, uh, at the Stedelijk Museum to get funds to, get, to go to the Getty Center in uh, Los Angeles. Um, it's a nice place to go, as you can see, but the Getty is um, in the world of art handling, um, I think one of the best museums in how they do their job. They're, um, uh, um, 
their standards of art handling is really from a higher level. Um, they have to deal with earthquakes um, in Los Angeles. They have um, state of uh, 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 they have uh, the, uh, the highest standards in shock and vibration uh, mesh, uh, things that they put in their gallery. So they got like pedestals that fall, um, the, the sides will fall off and the, the statue that's on it and when the earth is moving the statue will be like really steady and still. So they got rollers in a um, across um, a membrane and uh, so that's it so they do a lot of research on art handling on installing and for me that was like a real eye-opener also how they approach their job um, really uh, professional knew what they were talking about knew what they uh, were doing and they're also working together with their uh, conservators uh, department which is very big and as you will know, is also uh, linked to the University of Los Angeles. So they've got a big group of knowledgeable people where they can work together with. Uh, Kevin Marshall, who is head of preparation uh, uh, at the Getty, became also a good friend after that trip. Um, that will be a good friend for me, but also a very um, uh, important colleague in the field because He's also involved in packing, where we're talking about a little bit today. Um, that's the preparators, art handling, collection care, information network. So it's a network for us. We can be a member from, from, from packing, and I will uh, encourage you to go there and become a member. Very cheap, I think it's $25 a year. Um, you get access to their website with all kinds of um, uh, information, but also from the last uh, packing conference here in Amsterdam, uh, we have a lot of videos that are online, but they're behind a uh, wall for only members. So become a member and uh, support packing. Really important to, um, to share, but also to get your information uh, from. So, in 2017, I was asked to do a presentation in, uh, at the packing conference in uh, Fort Worth. Um, I did a presentation on uh, shipments in, uh, in, uh, in Italy, in Venice in Italy, I must say, because everything what you, what you know about art shipping and handling in Venice totally different. Everything is different. And uh, it's a, a, a good thing, it's good for you when you've got the opportunity to be a courier for an uh, art shipment in Venice. I've got a film, it's online, uh, look to, uh, at it and uh, it will prepare you in a different way than you normally will do for your courier trip. Um, so what I also did uh, in 2070, I pitched the um, idea to do a packing conference in Europe. They have a, a biannual conferences in the United States. They, got, they, they did uh, several uh, already, but never been in Europe. And I was thinking, wow, this conference, uh, art handling in Europe, we are not talking to each other. We are not uh, connecting. Uh, it's difficult to get um, to know each other because everybody is in their own museum and their own uh, um, uh, safe surroundings, but nobody is reaching out and, and talking to each other. Just I'm thinking, oh, can we do that in Europe also? Um, so I did, and I didn't do it by my own. I was thinking, oh, we can do a conference, but I already knew from uh, all the other conferences that I was uh, uh, participating in, uh, it's, it's a big job to do. So you need some help to get it on. And I reached out to the Rijksmuseum and the Van Gogh Museum to do it together. 
They're all based at the museum square. It's uh, close to each other. You can walk everything. And you've got like three places where you can go and, and do all the presentations. And, uh, and also, you've got a nice venue. You've got uh, the Van Gogh Museum. We had our uh, start of the conference with uh, drinks and everything. So you've got also, everybody here also is working at a museum. So that's good to do your presentations and, and, and conferences in a museum. It's also very nice surroundings. Um, Peking was there. And um, it was in April. It was sold out in January. We didn't expect it to, so, to sell out that fast. We had participants from all over the world, especially the United States, of course. Uh, a third came from, uh, from the States. We had a third from the whole of Europe. And one third of, uh, were Dutch uh, participants in, uh, in, in the conference. So it was a real good mix talking to a lot of different people, uh, new people I didn't know, um, uh, learned uh, from, from, from other, from other uh, people. That, that's good and that's also very nice to talk to each other and, uh, and also in a social way. Um, I have to... Um, what I, what, what I start now, and that's a little bit my second part of the presentation, it's a totally different one, because if, if, um, in, um, what I talked about you now is working with your colleagues in the field, in museums. But sometimes your network will also be outside of museums. So I work together with... Um, uh, uh, with, with um, with uh, um, Sabert, uh, and that's a test lab for shock and vibration. Uh, we did our rental crate um, uh, part of the shock and vibration at this facility. I became friends with the director, and we're talking about with him, so what can, can I do with shock and vibration? Um, I knew a little bit about it. I was prepared a little bit about it. I knew what I wanted to do with shock and vibration in standard uh, crates that we're using, because what I told you, our uh, crate was the worst performer in shock and vibration and uh, climate, but shock and vibration is uh, it's a, a, a difficult but important topic. Um, so in 2015, that was three years after we started the rental crate um, uh, uh, test, um, I got a, the Stedelijk Museum got a loan request for uh, Robert Rausenberg's Charlene. Uh, very important painting for us. Uh, it's a painting, I say, but it, it's not. It's a, a collage of so many different materials with all their own difficulties uh, and also in uh, shock and vibration. So in our database, it says, do not travel with this work. And it says, certainly do not fly with this work. Um, so, but the, the, the tour and the, and the exhibitions were so important also for the Stedelijk, but also for Robert Rausenberg's uh, legacy. Um, a lot of paintings that were uh, all over the world were coming together. And so uh, it was a good chance for also conservators and, 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 and other people that are really into uh, Robert Rausenberg's work to see him together and to compare. So the decision was made, it has to travel. Um, so now I was thinking, wow, here's my chance. I want to do something different. And that's an opportunity to do more research. And that opportunity, I, I directly saw it, I have to do that. But it also is an opportunity to get the funds to do the things that you are thinking, oh, this is good. You get your opportunity to make your next step. That's also important because I didn't want to use that old crate design that we used before, so we had to make a next step. But then you need also a, 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 a case that you have to do it. So be ready, that's what I'm telling everybody, but also be prepared. So know your field, know where you have to go to, know people in uh, different uh, uh, fields where you can get your information from. So, I had um, like an idea about the crate, but I was thinking, oh, this 
uh, th th this the shock and vibration, it's difficult to grasp. I don't know it exactly. It's um, um, when you're uh, in this topic, you will see that there are so certain um, um, difficulties in in what you know about it and what you need to know about it. So the size, yeah, easy. Uh, we know about it. The weight, the center of gravity, but natural frequency, yeah, I don't know what the natural frequency of this painting is, and nobody knows, and it's really difficult to know it. You can set up a... Uh, a, a, a uh, there, there's a possibility now, but then when we were designing this crate, it wasn't there, but there's a possibility now that you can measure it, but it's a difficult one, and uh, it involves a lot of uh, testing. Um, so, the design of the crate, um, I, I worked uh, together with uh, a, a company that's uh, called Trios Engineering. They're specialized in packing really fragile uh, um, uh, machinery for industry. So they're used to do really good uh, shock and uh, vibration uh, uh, damping. Um, here you see um, that we're building the crate. Um, here you also can see the wire rope isolators, totally different from the foam that we used before in our standard crates. That was a closed cell foam that didn't do anything uh, uh, on vibration, on shock a little bit, but not much. Um, but you also can see that um, because of those uh, isolators, and here you see the tensioning one, that's the one that does all the work. You see, you see the compression uh, wire rope isolator. That's only to keep it in place and uh, keep it there. Um, but all the work is done here. Um, it takes a lot of room in your crate. So it's also uh, limit, it, it, it limits you to um, build really high crates. So for really, really big paintings, um, this isn't uh, the, the, the isolators that you're wanting to have. But it's a start, and it's also a start uh, how you can do it differently. We traveled with this crate to, um, to MoMA, to uh, New York. Uh, we, we, we traveled to San Francisco, and in all those places, people of the shipping companies that did the, 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 the do the shipping in the States, all their uh, R&D people came uh, to the museums to see what we were doing and, what, and how we were doing it. Um, what is important when you're doing uh, things like this, that you also have to do measurements. So you need to know the data that is coming from your shipment. You can calculate, but in real life it's a little bit different. Um, so this is the shipment. Um, I have to tell, um, there's, uh, uh, first it went to Tate. Um, we put in the data logger and saw how the crate was performing. Um, we had a disclosure um, in, in, in the contracts to MoMA and uh, to uh, San Francisco that if the shipment to uh, Tate wasn't uh, satisfying with this crate, we, we could cancel. But it was. The data was good. So here you see that it's going. Um, here, here we are at uh, JFK. And, um, People that are couriers before know what you can expect. So you've got a lot to do with forklifts, with dollies, with uh, trucks. Um, this is uh, actually at MoMA. Uh, if you've been to MoMA with a shipment, you know you have to unload on the street. Um, it's, it's a big museum, but sometimes when you're there, you're thinking, oh, wow, this is not the standard that you like to see. <laughs> so. This is how they unload, so I, I'm comfortable with it, but because you can see that the guys that are doing the work, they do that all the time. Um, if you're not, then you're the courier that has to say no and stop and uh, do it differently, but this was really good. And um, it was really funny because of the sound is off, but um, if you look real close, um, there's a lot of traffic there on the street. And it's a lot of noise. And this is six o'clock in the morning. It's really early. <laughs> and it's 
it's rush hour there. What I also learned um, from that uh, Robert Rausenberg project is that you do your testing in a certain way. How, how we approached uh, the, the, the problem with, um, with, wire, with, with uh, isolation of shock and vibration, it's normally a four-step um, approach to testing. That's what you should do. Uh, we started in uh, step um, three. We started in step uh, four. Um, we also started sometimes in step two. That's not good. The four-step approach is um, know your environment, know your product, um, know your product with packing, and test that packing, and then go to your shipment. But so as you know, you never have the time to be that good prepared. But um, through the years and how we are uh, approaching it now, we're getting closer to a perfect world. Um, I talked about you, the wire rope isolators, getting back there. Um, we choose, uh, because we didn't know the, the, the eigen frequency of the, of the um, uh, painting, um, but we know which frequencies we uh, will uh, um, uh, en encounter during uh, transportation and which ones are damaging. So we, choose, we chose an, uh, the wire rope isolations that started work at 10 hertz. Um, 10 hertz, it's a movement like this. Um, this is a dummy painting uh, we made uh, to do tests. This is on a, on a, on an, uh, on a shaker table. Um, but when it's 30 hertz, you see the movement of the, of the canvas is really fast. But you see this piece here, it's getting loose a little bit, but it's stuck there. Um, at 77 hertz, you also see it moves, but maybe it's good. But um, when you see it here at 45 hertz, there's where all the damaging goes. So in this painting and in this setup, you see 45 hertz, that's the area that you sh surely want to cover. So starting at 10 hertz and then uh, dampening all your vibrations uh, in, the, in, in, in the next area, that's a really good thing to do. So here, you, uh, these are the graphics that I get from, uh, from Michel, from Sabert. Um, I don't know what it says, and nobody in the field does it. And so, but you can tell. <laughs> so looking for people in the field with knowledge, it's important. So you can discuss, and you also can see what to do and what not to do. Um, here you can see that we're um, testing, our next shipment, now we're doing good. So we got that, um, uh, that four-step approach. So we got the product we had uh, with Rauschenberg. We were here, then tested on the way. That's not good. But now we're testing before. So we, got, uh, we, we made our uh, inner crate, you see here, for a, a painting of uh, Andy Warhol that has to fly to uh, Chicago. Um, you also see that we are using now different uh, uh, isolators, smaller ones, um, not the big wire rope, but little boxes that are doing the same job as the wire rope isolators. Um, for us, this is really uh, nice to have because now we can um, um, pack bigger, bigger paintings um, and do a good job in, uh, in, in isolating. Um, what I can say is, I talked about the 10 hertz, you see it here. And this is all those lines you see here, this is, this is input. So we do a lot of measurements also on the, on the crate, but not in the area that, where the painting is, but on the bottom of the crate to see what kinds of, uh, of, of frequencies you, the, the crate will experience in different kinds of transport. Here you can see that we did a um, measurement with dollies with nylon wheels. And uh, this is the, cur the curve that uh, the nylon wheels will give you, direct input. Um, we can simulate this on the shaker table. So we programmed it that um, we have that um, uh, nylon wheel dolly here. And you also can see that the 10 hertz line, that the green line, and that's above the uh, damping material, 
is really um, getting down and getting dampening and starting to work at 10 hertz. So here you see it up and here you see that down. So this is really a good result. And we did, this is a result of the new uh, damping isolators that we are using now. Here you can see uh, how it reacts at shock. Um, you see here, uh, I think it's a 47 uh, G uh, shock, so that's a big one. Um, and here you can, in this line, you can see what it does in the crate where the painting is packed. So you see less than, uh, now I think it's 4 or 4.7 Geez, that we're, oh, here it is. So you can see here we got 43 input, and the highest level that, um, uh, that where you can see that um, it's working is less than seven. So seven Gs, that's for us is a good number because we are starting to, uh, to, to, um, to think that um, 15 Gs is the area that you can see damage to your object. Um, so you got knowledge through data, There's, you have to measure, buy a good data logger, um, seek help from specialized companies, that's your network, that's what you have to, uh, where you have to, where you have to be. Um, collaborate with other museums, important. Uh, a lot of people with each other more knowledge. Um, be on the lookout for new materials, methods. Um, also look in industry, go to trade fairs. Um, a lot of companies are showcasing their new products. Go there and uh, talk to them. Um, do join research programs uh, with university, important. Especially the um, conservators are working with university. Um, get involved with them and join test programs with industry, what I did with, uh, with Aerosorber. So I'm using now this material. For us, it re works really, really good. The same as the wire rope isolators. I must say the wire rope isolators are more durable, um, but mostly uh, the bigger shipments and for the bigger um, crates, um, I don't know if we will use them again and again. Um, here you can see how we tested it on the shaker table. This is a transport that we measured uh, previously. So we got all the frequencies. We know everything that are, is um, how it works. Here you also can see that um, damping material is really working. And here you also can see that all the pickups that you, in the wires, that are, is how you measure. And here you can see 10 hertz, and you see how it goes down, and how the input is and the output is. So, for us, it's a real good material. It works. Uh, the shipment was uh, on the 27th, uh, 27th of September this year. Um, we did the measurements. The crate performed better than we expected. Uh, we had a, a high, a high um, a shock input. Um, you can see it here. It's a little bit dark, but it's in the purple. But you see here is, uh, is the level of input, and here you see what the output is. This, here, this is your painting. So it's dampening really, really good. Um, this is what I told you about how to approach a test, um, which steps you have to take, uh, important ones, but sometimes not possible for you, but afterwards and when you're doing new research, try to do it like this because that will give you a good result. Um, this is last, this year uh, where we won <laughs> an award in the category transport with Aerosolver and uh, I'm, I'm not the owner of Aerosolver, uh, but working with them together gave us a real opportunity to, be, to make a better crate and to do better prepar preparations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark, for that presentation. Yeah. Great. Uh, do, we, do we have time some, for some questions? Of course. Are you up for it?
No. Have you no No. <laughs> Mark? All nice people here. <laughs> I better answer like that myself. Will it come to Europe again, Packin? You think? What do you think? Will Packin come to Europe again? Um, you think? I think. I hope. Hmm? But I'm also here to make you enthusiast to be the next um, country to organize it, and I think it's important to do. Um, we did the organization of the Packin conference. Um, so we've got another lot of knowledge how to organize it, how, wh wh what you will encounter. This we can help you to, be, uh, to do a new packing conference here in Europe. Um, the next one will be in two years in the States, so, and, after, and then two years on, it will, I hope it will be in Europe again. So if anybody here is thinking, wow, we can do that also, I hope. And Mark, you will stay with us uh, later today and also yeah. tomorrow, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, you will network with us? Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah, Thanks. I hope yeah. so. Yeah. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Thanks. Um, as a small token of our appreciation for you coming here and sharing your important work with us, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>